Hello and welcome to UAT Time within Night Country Special by Force Ukraine. You can find us on the frequencies available on our website, firstuae.com. I am Olivier Vidrin. UAT Time is dedicated to bring Ukraine and Europe closer to each other by introducing the real Ukraine to the rest of the world. Our guest today is Vladislava Rutiska, Deputy Minister of Agrarian Policy and Food of Ukraine. Uh, welcome. Thank you, Olivier. Thank you for inviting. Welcome to our program. Uh, I am very happy that uh, you accepted the, my invitation. Thank you. Um, because uh, your sector, agricultural sector, is very important for Ukraine. Yeah, for sure. Uh, is one of the, is maybe the first sector, economical sector of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And uh, this sector is very important also in the EU agreement. Yes. And um, you now, Ukraine, has to face a lot of reforms. Yeah, sure. And uh, because of this EU agreement mm -hmm. at first. Uh, what in your sector, the reform for the agricultural sector, what the best or the most important reforms uh, in your sector? Can you, can you show to us some, mm -hmm. some of those reforms? First of all, you should know that the major part of the agreement in between Ukraine and EU actually belongs to the agriculture. Mm -hmm. So uh, we provided uh, recently the results of the gap analysis in our legislation and legislation in EU. And harmonization of this process will take a lot of time because a lot of laws and sub-laws should be adopted to face the EU requirements in terms of the safety and in terms of the quality of the food. So we should provide full integration and full understanding on the way from farm to fork principle and to persuade our partners all over the world that agricultural products made in Ukraine are the best ones, the most quality, the most tasty and the most healthy. You are talking about the EU standards and yes. EU norms. Mm -hmm. uh, in, your, in your strategy, how many years uh, that will take to be in the same norms, same standards that in European Union? Actually, when the agreement was signed, it was supposed that during the adaptation process, along 10 years, it will be necessary for us to have a strict plan of these uh, changes in legislation and to persuade all the partners, not only in EU, but international community, that um, with these changes we are facing all the EU requirements and furthermore international requirements. Uh, everybody know when we are interested about the uh, agricultural sector that Ukraine is like an uh, agricultural superpower country. Yes. And I think about uh, green. Mm -hmm. uh, in uh, last year, uh, Ukraine, oh no, this year Ukraine will export uh, 39, for 49, 39 million tons of green. Mm -hmm. And um, how uh, in this special sector of agriculture, how you will implement reform? Because, okay, I move all around Ukraine, okay. and mm -hmm. I saw a big, big place, uh, landscape, uh, big potential, mm -hmm. but a large part of this potential uh, is uh, free, you know. Uh, and uh, what is, to, to, to manage this uh, potential, what you will do, do I, I, I want to talk about foreign investment. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to talk about the mor 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 moratorium, yes? Mm -hmm. I want to talk about that, how you will manage those investment, okay. foreign investment, mm -hmm. to develop this, this country. Mm -hmm. Yes. First of all, uh, let us talk about the figures, yes? I'm working uh, as a deputy minister on the integration almost two years. And we do understand that each fifth person that work in our country working in agriculture. Actually, uh, based on the first five months of 2016, uh, we export approximately um, agricultural goods on six billion uh, dollars all over the world. And the share of this export in the total structure of the export approximately 42%. 
We have really good uh, figures for the Asia. Almost half of our agricultural export goes to Asia. Approximately 30% goes to European Union. Mm -hmm. And in case we'll compare five months of 2016 with the five months of 2015, we can see that the agricultural export to EU raised up to 24%. So it's the really good uh, figures for the agricultural export in EU. And uh, last two years, we provided a memorandum with the agricultural traders with the grain mm -hmm. and uh, we split the amount of the grains that could be exported with those that should be in the country and to provide the national um, product safety and uh, national uh, let's say um, product defense program because we should fulfill the internal market as well. Uh, with this memorandum, we have a really good cooperation with the agricultural traders. And yes, half of our grains goes to the export worldwide. Actually, we export to more than 190 countries. And I should say that uh, this cooperation is really good and we proceed with this. But actually, along the way, we provide the reforms. First of all, you should understand that we are working really hard on the land legislation. Mm -hmm. Actually, we do understand that um, cancellation of the moratorium could yeah. rise the investment climate in Ukraine. And together with the World Bank experts and national experts, right now we are doing a lot in regards of the land legislation to make it transparent and to provide the transparent land auctions. And we are looking forward for the decisions in the parliament about the land legislation. And from the ministry side, our minister announced that the land reform one of the most key reform for the ministry. You know, uh... In, personally, in my family, I have some farmers, mm -hmm. and I saw uh, the land of your country, and the land of your country is very rich. Uh, you have with this 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 one a big potential, and uh, I'm sure, and I know that a lot of investors are waiting uh, those reforms to uh, to do some investment. Investor from from EU uh, uh, at first, and. Uh, because uh, you know a uh, large part of this country is not um, developed in uh, uh, in the uh, agricultural sector and uh, th this big potential can really help ukraine to uh, have money to to to, to reinforce its economy mm -hmm. and in this way, uh, we can also talk about the cooperation with international donators. Because you know that the IMF, the World Bank, the EU uh, is doing like a big platform to provide some, uh, some financial aid. What, what is, in this case, what is the, the, the policy of, the, of your minister? Last two years, I'm a chair, chair, chairperson for the project on the land legislation that we are doing together with the World Bank and with the national experts in Ukraine. Uh, we are doing this together with the Jack Adaster, and this year uh, we provide uh, several changes in regards of the land lease agreements and also with the pilot projects about precise geocadastral system and implementation in different regions of Ukraine to be sure that the data in the geocadaster are absolutely in line with the reality. Mm -hmm. uh, we are preparing this then to use in the open land auctions. Mm -hmm. uh, our minister, Mr. Taras Kutovy, announced that the land legislation should be changed in line with the long-term land lease and ability to pledge this in the banks. So uh, he announced this and now our ministry are working on these uh, changes in legislation together with him and providing the steps that he announced. But uh, as you know, uh, the agricultural sector in, in Ukraine, as the agricultural sector in, in France a few years ago, few years ago uh, a few years ago in France, we have a very small farmer, you know, with uh, only uh, five cows and uh, some chicken. Uh, in Ukraine, now this is the same. Uh, uh, I went to Karpat 
and I saw a very small farmer with one co, two co, uh, one house, uh, some, some kitchen, uh, chicken, excuse me, it's chicken. And what, how you will manage that? How you will manage this transition mm -hmm. from the small farm to biggest one? Mm -hmm. Actually, yes, the agriculture sector is split by the big uh, farms mm -hmm. or holdings here in mm -hmm. Ukraine and also the platform of the small and medium uh, farmers. A minister announced his program and as well uh, the support for the small and medium farmers is the key role for the, minister, for the ministry. Actually, right now we are implementing the direct financial support for the small and medium farmers to be announced in upcoming weeks by the minister mm -hmm. and to try to help them, uh, those who are small, to become a medium one and for those who are a uh, really good medium one to help to cooperate and to uh, create the cooperation system in Ukraine with the ability for the cooperatives then to go further for the export. And okay, I, I, will, I, I will talk also uh, with the example of France. In France, uh, when you want to be a farmer, you, you need some training. Mm -hmm. um, what is the policy of the Ministry of Agriculture in the uh, agricultural uh, education? Mm -hmm. Do uh, you will provide some education for uh, for the future farmer of this country? Mm -hmm. I truly believe that each of the reforms should start with the education, mm -hmm. because when you give the ability to uh, obtain the knowledge or technology for the farmers, it gives them much more clear understanding about the demand and perspectives that exist in the world. Actually, in this regard, we uh, cooperate with the donors from all of the countries and we provide really good training programs together with the IFC, together with the Canadian government, together with the Netherlands and other countries, and with the help of International Financial Corporation, World Bank and other type of the, uh, partners along with the businesses like Bayer, BSF, Sagenta, Monsanto, Souffle and others to provide the trainingship for the farmers, to show them how to create the farms, how to manage the funds of the farm, what is the demand and also um, requirements for the products. And along the way, we did more than, more than 100 projects in 2015 in mm -hmm. regards of the education and exchange of the knowledge. And in 2014, it was as well more than 200 projects. So we are constantly online with the farmers all over the Ukraine. We are the local um, regional councils. Uh, with the governors of the different regions of Ukraine, providing them different suggestions about these programs, how they are running, and then is the Ministry of the Agriculture and all of the partners who support us in this regard. Actually, as well, we show in our One Comprehensive Agricultural Strategy 2020 mm -hmm. all these approaches in regards of the training ship for the small and medium farmers, giving them ability to obtain working capital mm -hmm. during the hot season and before the preparation for the hot season, uh, development of the credit schemes for them, uh, involvement um, in the different projects that we are running together with the donors and together with the international financial organizations to provide them investments and to provide them like support for the investment projects in the structure 50 to 50 percent and the ability to start business uh, and the ability to run the business. You know, uh, in France, we have a very famous bank, Credit Agricole. Yes. And uh, in, in my family, when um, we want to buy some new um, uh, tractor, big engine, you know, to mm -hmm. do them. we have some some help, financial help or financial aid. Uh, do you have, uh, you talk about credit, do you have uh, for those young farmer who want to buy some new uh, engine, what, how you will help them? You, 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 because you spoke about credit. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they will have some special financial aid, they will have something like that. Mm -hmm. Because the investment is very large, really. 
Yes. Actually, last year, together with the team of the European Investment Bank, I worked on the project of AgriApex loan. Uh, it's 400 million of euro mm -hmm. to provide for the small and medium farmers. Right now, we are looking forward for our parliament to ratify this AgriApex loan and then ability to uh, use this uh, AgriApex loan for the small and medium farmers will be available via the Ukrexim Bank and also via the commercial banks, for example, like Credit Agricole. Mm -hmm. Right now, uh, last two years, we were working together with the Credit Agricole quite, qu quite <laughs> close, mm -hmm. and uh, Credit Agricole one of the one of the banks that provided. A uh, really big agricultural portfolio and really big agricultural support for the small and medium farmers. Together with them, we organized a lot of trainings and a lot of courses in regards of the financial management and HASP certification and uh, um, ability for the small and medium farmers to understand how to cooperate and how to work and what is the requirements. In upcoming months, together with the Credit Agricole, we will still use a lot of programs and roundtables for the small and medium farmers to understand how can I come to bank, mm -hmm. uh, how to buy or we are leasing or obtaining the credit from the Credit Agricole, uh, the support in case I would like to buy a tractor or some kind of the small uh, equipment line to mm -hmm. produce something. And as well, I should say that um, together with the other banks like Pravex, uh, Intesa San Paolo Group, like Raiffeisen Bank Aval, as well, they, they have rather quite big range of products to suggest to the small and medium farmers to use this. Additionally, in the several regions of Ukraine, we implemented together with the help of IFC and Swiss government and also uh, companies like Sigenta, NCH, Bayer, BSF, uh, the, uh, the system of the crop receipts. It's obtaining of the working capital for the hot season and then given back in money or, for example, um, given back in harvest. In oblasts like Poltavska oblast, then Vinnytska, Cherkaska, and Kharkivska, now this product, this financial product is available for the small and medium farmers. And the results of this is really good. Uh, recently with the IFC, we made a training ship course in Bra Brasilia for mm -hmm. our agricultural producers to show how the crop receipt uh, project working in Brasilia with creation of the real strong small and medium plat uh, small and medium farmers platform and right now we expanding to several more regions of Ukraine actually Kievska oblast will be involved in this project Vinnytska and others and I have also uh, two other questions First of all, you have, you know, uh, the meat sector, yes, the green sector, and the milk sector. Any trend? Which uh, which sector you will uh, push more, or you will push all the sectors, or what? What is the policy? In our One Comprehensive Agricultural uh, Strategy 2020, we made a really precise analysis of all of the subsectors. Mm -hmm. uh, in agriculture in Ukraine with the analysis of the current uh, state and also tasks that should be resolved for the subsectors. Actually, we do understand that the turnover of the capital in the green business much more efficient and much more yeah. faster than, for example, in case we will compare with the milk production. Milk, yeah, yeah. But milk production is really essential for Ukraine. And we do understand that the world prices, unfortunately, for the milk are not so interesting and are not so high as they maybe should be. Mm -hmm. Uh, but this is the worldwide situation. Actually, the same problems you face in the European Union yeah, countries in, yeah, in and so on, occasion. in the France. Mm. Uh, and we do understand that we should provide the support for our milk producers because we do understand that the turnover of the capital in the milk business uh, in times much more longer than, for example, in the grain business. Mm -hmm. You should provide the identification for the animals, real good feed for the animals, genetics, then medicine, then... And for meat sector. The, and for the meat sector as well, medicine and equipment, mm -hmm. software, mm -hmm. all the time. It's really 
it's really difficult how to manage this uh, subsector and this uh, type of the business efficient. And uh, the support from the ministry will be, first of all, the direct financial support for the small and medium farmers who are in the milk business. And also, we are strive for the cooperation in the milk business. So we do understand that in case our producer producers will cooperate with each other, the cooperation that the cooperatives that provide the milk products and their cooperation with the companies who produce uh, products from milk will be really like a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. So that's why the major role for the ministry right now to persuade agricultural producers who are in the milk business to cooperate and to create the milk cooperatives. And uh, another question. Now in uh, European agriculture, and uh, we have um, like um, a new way of, new way of, of thinking, um, we are talking more and more about bio mm -hmm. sector. Uh, you have, you know, the intensive agricultural uh, mm -hmm. policy, and you have the, the new bio uh, policy. Uh, in Ukraine, uh, you will take care about bio policy, from, or you will have some bio projects uh, Yes, for sure. Actually, one of the key role for the ministry as well to support this type of the subsector and to do this in the various details. Actually, we do support right now organic farming a lot and we do see a huge of prospectus for the future in the organic production of Ukraine. But as well, the bio um, technologies and also all kinds of the bio production is really essential for the Ukraine. And we do understand that right now we have a steadily grown this sector and types of the plants that is well building by different companies in this regard. So we do understand that it will be the future. And uh, the last one, uh, do uh, in your uh, strategy, uh, how you will uh, implant uh, environmental policy? Uh, how you will, uh, yes, uh, respect, uh, I can say, sustainable development uh, in this agricultural sector? Mm -hmm. All the time we are working really close with the Ministry of the Ecology. So actually, you know, to do the sustainable agriculture, it's not possible without the really proper understanding of the environmental safety and avoiding environmental risks. Uh, so in this regards, we have a really big projects together, for example, with the FAO and together with the Europol, Interpol, uh, in regards of the counterfeit pesticides. Uh, we are really fighting with this and teaching our customs and also laboratories to avoid uh, any kind of the sources of these counterfeit pesticides. But furthermore, we are really taking care and now right now with the Ministry of the Ecology, we are working on the national irrigation strategy to understand what kind of the environmental risks could be in regards of the amelioration or, for example, in regards of the rivers and seas. Um, programs that we have and how to cooperate with EU in this regards. We have really good projects uh, on the river ecology, mm -hmm. seas ecology, together with the DG Mare from Brussels. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you very much because now <laughs> uh, we are at the end of, of uh, our uh, program. Thank you very much. That thank was you, very, very interesting. And, uh, you know, I come also from a farmer uh, family. Uh, part of my family, uh, we have a, a farm. And, um, and I, 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 during holiday, I was in the farm of my family. And I know very well the agricultural sector. And, uh, and this is very important to me to, to help those farmers also. You know, I'm from the farmer's family as well, and uh, my uh, grandfather used to say that uh, no farmers, no future, no food. <laughs> yeah, so. I am totally agree with you. We come from, we come from there, you know, we come yes. from the farm. We should be really close yeah. to the land. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. It was United Country, UAT Time by First Ukraine. Our guest was Vladislava Rutitska, Deputy Minister of Agrarian policy and food of Ukraine. Olivier Vidrin was working for you in the studio. Stay with us and we'll show to you the Ukraine. Thank you for being with us. Have a good day and see you soon.